Good evening, everyone. Merry Christmas. Um, just before we begin with our opening carol, I want to just let you know that um, here at First Church, we really encourage imperfection um, because we know that we are not perfect and we love the fact that neither are <laughs> any of us. And I just want to let you know that we discovered um, an imperfection in our bulletins that we have passed out to you, which is that we are missing um, a page and therefore um, three of the lessons and carols. So if you were thinking you were gonna get out of here quicker than you were after looking at such a short bulletin, <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're not. We will be here <laughs> for longer than you thought. Um, it's also true that because of COVID, we, um, we discourage singing, congregational singing, which is the absolute worst at Christmas time, we know, but we do rise in body or in spirit um, to sing especially in the opening and closing carols, will tell you when to stand. Um, so the fact that you don't have the words to the carols for the last part of the service is okay because you can't sing them anyway, unfortunately. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> so with all of that said, um, I'm sorry about the confusion of this night, but isn't that the theme of this year? Confusion and also blessedness. So welcome, 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 and please join us. Um, please rise in body or spirit and sing inside your hearts our first carol, O Come All Ye Faithful. which is the Christmas season, we have come. Welcome, <laughs> and we are here, we are still here. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Welcome to First Church in Sterling. Welcome to those who want to follow Christ, who have doubts, who do not believe. Welcome to believers, to questioners, and questioning believers. 
Welcome to people of all ages, races, nationalities, abilities, sexualities, and gender expressions. Welcome to those of you whose emotions are running over and jumbled or who hang on as by a slender thread. We gather tonight, still, even now, to light candles in the darkness. These candles are for you. These candles are for all those who long to see. Let us perceive the possibilities of birth and hope in our lives and in our hurting world. When we take unto ourselves the lost and weary, the family in great debt, the disillusioned soldier, the child afraid to go to school, we make of ourselves a stable where no one is turned away. Let us pray for the sanity of the powerful, the dignity of the powerless, the agency and wisdom of one another, and for a new day of peace, justice, health, and respect for all people in all places. In times of sorrow, may there be dancing. In times of fear, may there be soothing song and gentle hands. And above all, may there be joy in the morning. Tonight, we pose precariously here, our heads beneath shimmering stars, our feet upon this, our common earth, with arms and hands free to hug and to heal. May we each be bearers of small, inextinguishable gifts of light. Once again, may we pause together, look up, and in that far off distance, hear that old, old music, the music of hope, humanity, and heavenly peace. In that spirit of wonder, welcome one and all. My dog veered left off the path. I've learned that following her on days I'm awake leads to revelation. She brought me to a small manger made of new wood, freshly sawed and nailed together, made in the traditional nativity scene shape. The manger had been placed at the edge of the woods. It was empty. I suspected the four children living in the house nearby. Outdoors often, aided by their parents, they played games in the woods involving lightsabers, capes, and crowns. They are still seers. The manger appeared a week into Advent. Brittle brown leaves from the oak above blew into and out of it. Then one day the manger was not empty. It was filled to the brim with hay. Two days later, the hay had been dumped onto the ground and the manger moved a few feet away. It was now half full of shelled corn. A single fox squirrel sat up in the manger, leisurely eating kernel after kernel. 
I found the children pulling each other through the snow on sleds. Tell me about the manger, I said. The oldest, a boy, said, it's for the deer. We like to watch them. Next, we're going to put a hunk of salt. It's for all the animals, interrupted the smallest, a girl who had her head tipped back, mouth open to taste the falling flakes. In the fullness of time, the Christmas story says a girl gave birth, ringed by animals. She lay the baby in one of their feeding trials where animal bodies would warm the air around his fresh-born human body. Mother and child fell asleep and woke to their chuffs and shuffling hooves, their calls and shuddering of their hides. Later, sheep herders smelling of dirt, damp wool, and milk crowded into the stable. Out of the wild night fields, these animal men sitting in the dark were the first to get the word. A baby had been born, they were told, who would show people a way out of their small, pinched lives, a way to abandon themselves to the ever-present, unstoppable current of love that carries all things to radiant wholeness. To recognize him, they should look for a child at home among animals. At the edge of the woods where children put out corn and salt and watch for them and name them and speak to them, the animals wait. Will they one day find the manger empty, the children indoors? So much rushes children into dropping their capes and crowns in the leaf meal. So much clamors and flashes for their attention. As they grow, will they lose the sight that sees light and spirit in other creatures? Or will they, despite the rush and clamor, find irresistible the beauty quietly radiating from everything that is? To the animals, it makes all the difference. Their hope, and the hope that breathes, is that human ones abandon themselves to the one great love. For that, all creation waits. against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For, For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
tell it on the mountain. And now, beloved, may the peace of God be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. Please turn and greet one another with socially distanced signs of Christ's peace. Hi, everybody on Facebook Live. Merry Christmas. Peace be with you. A reading from the Christian scriptures, Romans 8, 18 to 30. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. Mm. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Amen. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill Yeah. 
the King of Kings lay thus in lowly manger in all our trials, born to be our friend. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices. Please won't you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together find their way into the heart of God this evening. Amen. The hope of all that breathes is that human ones abandon ourselves to the one great love. For that glory about to be revealed to us, all creation waits. I figured out recently from a wise colleague named Mary Ludy that there are no animals mentioned in any of the gospel accounts of the Christmas story. Have you ever noticed that when reading the gospel accounts? There are no animals mentioned at all. We know that Jesus was born in a stable, right? A home for the animals. That's where he was born. And, so, and we also know from the gospel accounts that Jesus was born with animal people looking on, lowly shepherds who did the hard, dirty work of herding sheep. And we know that he was placed in a cow's feeding trough as a bed, right? But the gospel accounts of Jesus's birth are otherwise completely human-centric. They never tell the animal's story. The friendly beasts are just not part of the narrative, even though we sing that song. No cattle are lowing. No shaggy brown donkeys are waiting to carry Mary and Joseph home. No peanut the camel is stealing the feed cup out of the Magi's hands, right? No doves are cooing the precious baby back to sleep. That's all stuff that we added later so that we could have an adorable Christmas pageant, right? Our scripture says that all of creation waits, all of creation waits with eager longing for the glory about to be revealed to us. Surely the donkey brayed along with Mary as she pushed Jesus through the birth canal. 
Surely the cows bellowed as a new human baby laid where their dinner used to be. Surely the sheep grazed as their caretakers stood awestruck, visited by a heavenly choir of angels. Surely the animals were there. Thankfully, we noticed the omission, we humans, and we wrote the animals back into the Christmas story. Too often, we center the human experience to the exclusion of the creatures of the earth or the earth itself and all that is in it. Too often, we center the human experience at our own detriment. And Advent, all Advent long, we here at the church have been learning together something about how animals survive the darkness of winter, right? To, pre- to prepare for what we know will be a difficult winter full of sickness and suffering, we as a church have been learning from creatures who were born to hibernate, who were born to scavenge for food, who were born to stay alive, <laughs> in the harshest conditions. They don't need jobs and retirement accounts. They don't need fuzzy blankets or Trader Joe's. They have no need of therapists or Prozac or those lamps that you can buy on Amazon that ward off seasonal depression. (laughs) Animals take what they need and simply quietly wait for the warming of the earth. As Gail Boss says, the animals trust that the darkness is not an end, but a door. Thank God we wrote them back into the Christmas story. In St. Paul's letter to the Romans that Kate read, Paul reminds his audience that the darkness is not an end, but a door to the coming reign of God. The sufferings of the present time are not worth comparing to the glory about to be revealed to us, he says. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. While we wait, we must not rely on vapid optimism, but active, faithful hope. In hope we are saved, Paul says. Hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. One of the causes of human suffering, according to Paul's letter, is that the Spirit has given us reason to hope for more than we can see. The suffering Paul speaks of is suffering that comes from knowing what the world could be, even as we live in the world as it is. There is a concept called the Stockdale Paradox that I have been revisiting through all of this season of COVID tide, right? comes from a business book called Good to Great by Jim Collins. I don't read business books, but... Uh, Another preacher told me about it. She read it for me. I have found this concept so helpful as I think about the difference between optimism and hope. An admiral in the U.S. Navy, James Stockdale, survived eight years as a POW in a North Vietnamese prison camp. When asked who of his fellow prisoners struggled to make it out alive, he replied this, the optimists, he said. Oh, they were the ones who said, we're going to be out by Christmas, and Christmas would come, and Christmas would go. And then they'd say, we're going to be out by Easter, and Easter would come, and Easter would go. And then Thanksgiving, and then it would be Christmas again, and they died, he said, of a broken heart. So the Stockdale paradox is the ability to hold two opposing but equally true things at once. You must have faith that you will prevail in the end, and at the same time, you must confront the brutal facts of your current reality, both and. 
We must confront the reality of the present times and then place our hope in what we can't see, which is the glory of the Lord about to be revealed to us. We don't know how, but we will prevail. Jesus, the Christ child, is born in a hopeless time after all, during the occupation of the Roman Empire. Jesus is born during the reign of King Herod, the king of Judea, who is famous for his support of Rome and his vengeful and raging temper. Jesus is born into poverty. He's born into terror and despair to an unwed teenage mother who's poor and only the poorest of the poor. And yes, surely the animals were witnesses. His birth signals Herod to order all firstborn babies to be killed, in fact. And still... And still out of the depths of depression, oppression, persecution, poverty, death, war, on them light shines. God's light pierces the darkness in the form of a promise. A child born for us. He is called Emmanuel, which means God with us. The darkness is not an end, but a door. St. Paul says that the whole of creation is groaning in labor pains as they await that light to again pierce the darkness. Along with Mary who births God into the world on that holy night, we too are groaning in labor. We are groaning in labor to birth God into all the weary world, right here and right now. So where are my people at that have experienced labor? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you have firsthand experience. Men, do not raise your hand. I don't care if you were in the birth room. You did not experience labor, okay? I have experienced labor too. It's been a while. But here are some things that I learned. One, it hurts. Can I get an amen? Amen. Two, and this is important, it doesn't last forever. Amen. Three, the pain is productive. Four, the pain also teaches us something about our own strength, right? Five, breathing helps us to stay present. Six, just keep pushing, right? Seven, this is the last one. You already have all you need to provide for your child. Food, warmth, and love, all contained within your body, right? The incarnation. The whole of creation is groaning in labor pains. We are hurting and we are strong. We are in pain and pain is our teacher. The suffering of the present time will not last forever. The transition part of labor feels like dying, and it means it's almost over. A new life can begin. Breathe and don't stop pushing. We have all that we need already to nurture the new world about to be born. We know that all things work together for good, for those who love, and that we are called according to love's purpose. We follow the firstborn within a large family that includes the whole world, even us. God has the audacity to make us part of love's plan for a world made whole. God shows us that the day we were born was also a holy announcement to the whole world, here is my word made flesh. Here is my word made flesh. You, beloved, you are God's word of love made flesh. You have put your skin in the game 
spending almost the entirety of this year loving your neighbors by staying home, by wearing masks, by standing or sitting six feet apart from each other, by foregoing travel, by putting off rituals and rites of passage. You have stayed connected by creating music and arts and relationships. You've made social media less toxic and more beautiful somehow. You have given so many gifts and sent cards. While you waited, you have fed and clothed and educated and housed people. You have comforted the dying. You have celebrated the living. You have been bringers of peace, committed to justice. You have saved countless lives with your actions. You will save countless more in the coming months and years. This is the work of salvation. This is the work of healing. You are the word made flesh. All creation waits for you. The hope of all that breathes is that human ones abandon ourselves to the one great love. For that all creation waits. And we are the ones we've been waiting for and we will prevail. Merry Christmas and amen. We rise in body and, or spirit and sing this hymn inside your heart, the first Noel. pray with me. When all of time is crushed into a few moments on the edge of everything, teetering on the brink of a new belief in the future, here is where we meet you, O oh God. In the last moments of darkness before the breaking of the light and the cry of a woman and the birth of love, here is where we meet you, O oh God. As silence deepens and the wonder stretches, and the ancient past becomes our longed-for future, and the words of the prophets slip into fulfillment, here is where we meet you, O God. Creating God, 
hold this moment made of every time. And may we breathe along with all those who have been here before to the heartbeat of hope and know this moment so full of expectation is as sacred as they get. For contained here is all of the hope of the future and the fulfilling of ancient longing. And the snarl of a silence as the universe bends with the weight of anticipation, where the worry is greatest in the moment most urgent. Here is where we meet you, O oh God, in flesh. We take this time in our service to invite your offerings. Our Christmas offering this year will be going to our Food is Love program, a program that we started during COVID in May that has now served over 15,000 meals to our community. It is truly an astounding feat that can only be possible because of your incredible generosity. You can find Christmas envelopes in your um, pews with you, and um, we are not going to pass offering plates, but we do have an offering plate in the back of the church, so if you'd like to put your envelope back there, you can during the offertory, or you can simply go online and donate on our donate page, fcsterling.org slash donate. Please give generously as though lives depend on it, because they do. This evening's offering will now be gratefully given and most gratefully received.
which we have given our hearts. Praise God for all of these gifts. Praise God for these givers. May we use all of it to create heaven on earth. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here, I, here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. 
the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Please join me in lighting our light from his light, singing for that world breathed into being, a world infused with God's heavenly peace.
Beloved, as you go out in the night with you, we would love for you to take the Christ light with you. Please, when you leave the sanctuary, bring the candle with you. Blow it out when you get out into the night, okay? Not in here. And go in peace. Sleep in heavenly, heavenly peace. And Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>